Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I realize that it has been a long time since I last made a video. For this, I apologize, but it's time to finally get this channel and my life back on track. I finally actually got a job and saved me enough to purchase this gaming slash video editing rig, which will make producing these videos a thousand times easier than on my old shitty Toshiba. All in all, it's time to get back into the swing of things around here, and I think I've found the perfect topic for my return to YouTube, even if it's a couple of months old at this point. Tim Hunt. Now, the too long didn't read on the story is actually pretty simple. Tim Hunt gave a speech on the 9th of June at the 2015 World Conference of Science Journalists in Korea. In the speech, he said words to the following effect, according to journalist Connie St. Louis, and I quote, let me tell you about my trouble with girls. Three things happen in the lab. You fall in love with them, they fall in love with you, and when you criticize them, they cry. Now, this quote was what essentially created a firestorm of controversy and criticism around Tim Hunt, and it was the center of endless high horse opinion pieces that placed Tim Hunt as a flashpoint for sexism in science. There was also a Twitter storm precipitated by, of course, the usual suspects. Basically, Tim Hunt was accused of blocking women's entry into the STEM fields and discouraging anyone but straight white men from doing science. A narrative by now completely entrenched in the media despite any and all evidence to the contrary. This quote was also the quote that essentially sunk his career in science, or at least put a big dent into it. Shortly after the media storm, Tim was forced to quit his positions both at the University College of London and at the Royal Society. And of course, many impassioned defences arose after he left both of those positions, though Hunt himself, of course, didn't help matters by saying that he stands by his comments, which at that time did look incredible sexist. All of these arguments, of course, though, will be rendered moot by what I'm about to reveal in a second. So, that is where the story should have ended, or would have ended, if we are to follow the media's narrative. Sexist old white professor says something stupid to a room full of journalists and pays the price in the court of public opinion. Now, this is something unpleasant, yes, but it's not something that's all that unusual, especially with the internet hate mobs that spread information perniciously as much as they do these days. No, what makes this one different is that, surprise, surprise, Tim Hunt was actually misquoted. There are several sources which actually show that the quote from St. Louis, which I read out earlier, was actually quite misleading. One of these sources is an EU report that was obtained by the Times. Although the source is behind a paywall, the full quote from the EU official who was writing a transcript of his speech for the report is... It's strange that such a chauvinist monster like me has been asked to speak to women scientists. Let me tell you about my trouble with girls. Three things happen when they're in the lab. You fall in love with them, they fall in love with you, and when you criticize them, they cry. Perhaps we should make separate labs for girls and boys. Now, seriously, I'm impressed by the economic development of Korea and, and women scientists without a doubt played an important role in it. Science needs women and you should do science despite all the obstacles and despite monsters like me. Notice that entire last part. Now, seriously, everything after that. That's really the kicker here. So while it's accurate to say that Tim Hunt did say that he has trouble with girls, what the media did was to ignore the second part, the part in which he praised women scientists and the part in which he said that he hopes that women scientists and women in general can overcome the barriers to entry into science and that we need more women scientists, exactly what all of these media articles have been saying. And if you notice how this and St. Louis' quote match each other, then if the first part of what he said was correct, and there's no doubt at all that he said, this is my trouble with girls, then why would the second part in which he praises female scientists be wrong? What would this EU official gain from fabricating a quote about what Tim Hunt said in an official EU report? What this suggests is that this was a very clear case of quote mining, taking only the part of the speech that St. Louis wanted to, and then making it look like Tim's message was that women are useless and inferior and should be out of science. In reality, Tim was simply commenting on the attitude of older scientists like himself and saying that he wishes women to succeed despite the chauvinistic attitudes of him and his peers. And he actually stated as much publicly in a letter that he wrote to The Guardian. A further source that backs this quote up and this version of events up is Natalia Demina. 
a Russian science journalist who was also there at the conference and attests that Tim had two parts to his speech, a serious part and a joking one. So he started out joking and then he transitioned into the now seriously serious part in which he praised female scientists. She also managed to record the very last part of his speech which clearly shows him praising female scientists and of course gives you an in illustration of the atmosphere and reaction in the room when he was saying these things. Here, take a listen. Congratulations, everybody, because um, and I hope, I hope, I hope, I really hope there is nothing holding you back, especially not monsters like me. <laughs> In fact, for the more observant among you, Connie St. Louis' original quote actually acknowledges that Tim Hunt said something about not wanting to stand in the way of women. But it's towards the end of the paragraph that she posted to Twitter, and so most of the internet quote-unquote journalists probably were too lazy to read that far, let alone question what Connie meant by that statement. Anyway, putting it all together, this is what we have. Tim Hunt gave a presentation with two sides. The humorous side, which was the one that was extensively quoted in the media, and that was the sexist one, and the side in which he praised female scientists and encouraged them to do science. The media take the first part and ignore the second. This leads to outrage and Tim Hunt being Fired. So this is obviously an open and closed case of journalists misrepresenting a source and doing some world-class quote mining. But of course it's a lot more than that, because you see there are three main players when it comes to the story. Connie St. Louis wasn't alone. There's also Deborah Bloom and Ivan Oransky. Out of the three, St. Louis has been by the far the person who led the charge against Tim Hunt, and so for the remainder I'll just focus on her lies and misdeeds, but if you want to read more about them, the top link in my description links to the Unfashionista blog, where there's a brilliant blog post dedicated to all of their misdeeds as well. So now, to close this out, we'll go to the many lies and misdeeds of Connie St. Louis herself, the person who essentially created this entire story. So, who is she? Well, according to the program at the event that she was speaking at, and also the event at which this incident took place, she's an award-winning freelancing broadcaster, journalist, writer, and scientist. The problem, of course, is that she's really not a scientist at all and was recently forced to update her resume, so there's lie number one. What she really is, though, is a journalism lecturer at the City College of London. Yes, you heard me correctly. This person who misquoted Tim Hunt and caused the entire media firestorm around him teaches journalism. Following up from that, Connie has also made a big deal about Tim not joking. She's always insisted, at least in a, as soon as a story really broke, that Tim was simply not joking and that the entire atmosphere in the room was hushed silence after his sexist diatribe. Here's some quotes from her. After he'd finished, there was this deathly, deathly silence. Very clearly, nobody was laughing. Everybody was stony-faced. And here's another one. So he says he was being humorous, and that's fine. You can try and be funny, but actually, you should take your cues from the audience and realize that nobody thinks you're being funny. And here's another. They were deeply offended and didn't get Hunt's quote-unquote jokes. Nobody was laughing. The problem, of course, is that all of those are complete bullshit. Roll the audio. Especially not monsters like me. <laughs> hmm, so according to Connie, this... <laughs> ...is the sound of absolute deathly silence. Who would have known? Probably the worst of it, though, came in a post Connie wrote on The Guardian called Stop Defending Tim Hunt, in which she did everything from captioning the image dishonestly in the article down to absolutely every statement in the body of that article being a lie or misrepresentation. She simply claims that despite all of the evidence to the contrary that Tim Hunt was 100% serious with his talk and that he was never joking. And I'm not going to play the audio again, but once again, that audio just eradicates all of her main points and shows you how dishonest she is. She's sitting in a room full of people laughing and still somehow comes out with this idea that everybody there was offended. But probably the single worst part in the entire article, the crescendo of awfulness, is the part in which she chastises Tim Hunt for not using the media witch hunt surrounding him to praise women in science, when ironically enough, 
His praise for women in science was the thing that she left out of her original quoting of him. Congratulations, everybody. The article is so rage-inducing that I'm not even going to quote any of it directly, but of course you could find the cringe fest down below for yourself now that you know the full context of the story and see just how bad it gets. All in all, it is pretty obvious the depths to which Connie St. Louis and her colleagues will sink to shovel dirt on Tim Hunt's name in any way that they possibly can. They will accuse him of anything using air quotes that fall apart under even the most basic of scrutiny and then when the chips are down Connie can just play the victim because after all Tim Hunt is just a privileged white man and she just happens to be a black woman so it's all good there let's just implement the progressive stack and kick Tim down to the bottom. In fact Tim is so privileged that he's out of two positions which mark the summation of his decades long career in science. Bravo, good work. At the end of the day though, there are several key points that come through about the state of internet quote unquote journalism that are worth remembering because if nothing else, this is a great cautionary tale. Firstly, single source stories like these have got to stop. Connie's lies were the reason that all of this happened in the first place. And if only someone chose to question her story early on and look for an actual recording of the speech without someone's biased interpretation of it, then none of this would have happened. Secondly, internet journalists will never back down. Simply put, the flow of information is too fast on the internet to be contained. Even if they issue a retraction, the damage has been done. Even basic logic doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that almost none of the other journalists in the room found what Tim said offensive. One journalist did and a couple of her cronies agreed with her and that was enough to ruin a career. This is exactly why there is a limitation of harm clause in the SPJ's ethics guidelines. Thirdly though and most chillingly of all, no one is ever punished for getting it wrong. Connie St. Louis is still teaching journalism to young and impressionable minds. One has to marvel at the irony of people going on and on about the damage that Tim Hunt's statements could have caused to women wanting to go into science, when in reality the only person who actually got hurt is Tim Hunt himself. These journalists get to go back to their cushy little lives hiding behind their bylines and Tim Hunt is exactly where this pack of vile, incompetent, despicable little liars put him. Firmly and squarely under the bus. I've been Dangerous Analysis. You can follow me on Twitter for all the latest opinions and updates from me. Thank you all for my subscribers and as always. Good night and good luck.